The Ark of the Covenant, the mysterious biblical object wildly reimagined by Hollywood to be a weapon of mass destruction, actually stored the Ten Commandments and was a symbol of God's presence to the Israelites. While biblical accounts spoke about it being a powerful object used in battle during the conquest of Jericho, the whereabouts of it after that has left many archaeologists with more questions than answers. With the final account of it stating that it was stored in Solomon's temple and no real evidence of its existence. Many people have considered it just to be a biblical analogy and was just a symbol used to represent God. But is that it? Is that where the story ends? With new claims of not only the Ark of the Covenant being found, but samples of Jesus' blood, are we about to discover the truth behind what we've long since thought to have been lost? Over the course of history, many archaeologists have searched for the Ark of the Covenant, but no one has claimed to have found it until 1978. While on a trip to Jerusalem, amateur archaeologist Ron Wyatt was walking near a place called Golgotha and the Garden Tomb in the northern region of Jerusalem when he claimed that he was guided by the Holy Spirit and prophesied that the Ark of the Covenant was hidden in Jeremiah's Grotto, which ironically was being used as a rubbish dump at that time. Out of luck, he returned home to the United States, but he was now obsessed and started researching the history of the Ark. And interestingly enough, he discovered that the last biblical reference to it was in 2 Chronicles chapter 35, verse 3, which read, He said to the Levites, who instructed all Israel and who had been consecrated to the Lord, put the sacred ark in the temple that Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, built. It is not to be carried about on your shoulders. Now serve the Lord your God and his people Israel. Reading the following line of that same chapter, in the 18th year of the reign of Josiah, this Passover was kept. Wyatt was able to determine from this verse that it was written around 621 BC which was only about 35 years before Nebuchadnezzar raised Jerusalem in the temple in 586 BC. That was a start. Wyatt now knew that in 621 BC, the Ark of the Covenant was in Solomon's temple. However, there was a problem. As mentioned in the text, the temple was destroyed. During 586 BC, because Jerusalem was surrounded by a siege wall that was constructed by the Babylonian army when it besieged the city, its inhabitants starved to death because no one was permitted to enter or leave. However, there existed a space between the walls of Jerusalem and the fortifications of the Babylonian armies called Syria's Gate, or more commonly referred to as No Man's Land. And according to Ron Wyatt's research, he found out that the Jews secretly built numerous underground caves connecting the passages in No Man's Land to Damascus Gate. And looking at the evidence, this would have been a great sight to hide this priceless artifact because it was outside the city walls where the Babylonians were least likely to look. And as there was no record for King Nebuchadnezzar ever finding the Ark and transferring it to Babylon, Ron Wyatt reasoned that the Ark of the Covenant was likely still buried underground where it had been kept secret during the Babylonian siege. Armed with that information, Wyatt returned to the site in 1982 and began excavating in the no man's land area near Damascus Gate of Jerusalem. And true to his research, he found the cave system that led him to a chamber containing a variety of artifacts, where he eventually claimed to have found the Ark of the Covenant. Wyatt went on to describe the Ark as a rectangular wooden box covered in gold with two cherubims on top. He noticed that there was a black dry liquid that had leaked onto the mercy seat of the Ark and quickly realized that it was somebody's blood. Blood that's been miraculously preserved for 2,000 years. Fascinated, he followed the trail of liquid, but soon realized that the spot he was standing at wasn't just any spot. He was directly under Christ's crucifixion site. Ron Wyatt had his suspicions, but couldn't confirm it. So moments after leaving the excavation site, he sent the blood to a lab in Jerusalem, where the results were astonishing. A normal human being's blood is known to contain 46 chromosomes, 23 from the mother and 23 from the father. 
with 22 autosomes from the female and 22 autosomes from the male, with the female giving an X and the male giving an X or a Y. However, the test only showed 24 chromosomes were present in this blood sample, 23 being from the female and one from the male. This blood sample had all its physical traits determined by its mother and showed that the single Y chromosome that it did have couldn't have came from a human male. And interestingly enough, the test also showed that the blood was still alive. With all the evidence on hand, Wyatt only had one conclusion on his mind. This blood that was found on the mercy seat only pointed to it belonging to one person, Jesus Christ. It made sense, as Jesus was only born from the Virgin Mary, and three days after his crucifixion, he came back to life. But was it actually real? Did Ron Wyatt actually find the Ark of the Covenant in the blood that was left behind by Jesus Christ? When Wyatt's story of the Ark of the Covenant broke, it quickly gained attention within the Christian community and was featured in several books, documentaries, and television programs. However, many experts in biblical archaeology and history were skeptical of Wyatt's claims and questioned the validity of his findings. One of the major criticisms of Wyatt's story is the lack of physical evidence to support his claims. Despite claiming to have conducted scientific tests on the Ark and other artifacts, Wyatt did not provide any documentation or peer-reviewed studies to back his claims. In addition, he didn't allow independent experts to examine the artifacts, which made it difficult to verify their authenticity. Another question that was asked was, where was the laboratory located? Are there any remaining blood samples from the claimed copious amounts that flowed down? Where are the test records? Can additional samples be obtained? Is there any proof of the alleged discovery? Why hasn't the evidence been presented for scientific scrutiny and analysis? When presented these questions, Wyatt either couldn't or wouldn't answer, which didn't do anything for the validity of his claim. However, was Ron Wyatt lying or was he silenced? One theory suggests that when his story broke, the Israeli authorities immediately shut his story down and threatened him to keep him quiet. Because the location of the Ark of the Covenant was near one of Islam's holiest places, and its revelation might incite a violent conflict between Jewish extremists and Muslims. Another point of contention is the location of Wyatt's alleged discovery. While many Christians believe that Gordon's Calvary is the site of Jesus' crucifixion and burial, there's no concrete evidence to support this claim. In fact, some historians and archaeologists have suggested that the area was a quarry or Roman excavation site rather than a burial ground. Moreover, many experts in biblical history and archaeology have cast doubt on the idea that the Ark of the Covenant could have survived for thousands of years in the conditions described by Wyatt. According to the Bible, the Ark was a highly sacred object that was only supposed to be handled by certain priests under specific conditions. If Wyatt's claims were true, it would mean that the Ark had been moved, hidden, and preserved for nearly 2,000 years without being damaged or destroyed. On August 8, 1996, Curator of Anthropology and Archaeology with the Israel Antiquities Authority, Joe Zayas, issued the following statement. Mr. Ron White is neither an archaeologist, nor has he ever carried out a legally licensed excavation in Israel or Jerusalem. In order to excavate, one must have at least a BA in archaeology, which he does not possess despite his claims to the contrary. We are aware of his claims which border on the absurd, as they have no scientific basis whatsoever, nor have they ever been published in a professional journal. They fall into the category of trash, which one finds in tabloids, such as the National Enquirer, Sun, etc. It's amazing that anyone would believe them. But despite these criticisms, many Christians continue to believe in Wyatt's story and consider him a hero for his efforts to prove the validity of the Bible. Wyatt himself passed away in 1999, but his legacy lives on through his followers in the ongoing debates over the authenticity of his discoveries. The story of Ron Wyatt's discovery of the Ark of the Covenant is a controversial and highly debated topic within the Christian community in the field of biblical archaeology. While Wyatt's claims have been met with skepticism and criticism by many experts, they continue to inspire believers 
and fuel discussions about the relationship between faith and science. Well, if what Ron Wyatt brought to the table is true, then that would be a very powerful piece of information, proving once and for all that the Bible is real. However, sadly in this world, just like any powerful piece of information that threatens to tip the scales of the world, it gets shut down all too quickly.